Hello, welcome to my studio and welcome to another edition of Art Discussion with me, Adelaide Demoa. As you may know, I'm an artist and I like to interview other artists to find out what makes them tick and how they overcome the challenges that they have to overcome on a daily basis in order to pursue their dreams and their professional careers as artists hence this series, Art Discussion. What I'd then like to do is to package those interviews into video format and share them with you so that I can help to promote the artist and also provide some inspiration for you, the viewer. So today's interview is with one of my colleagues here at Thameside Studios in Woolwich, Becca Smith. Becca is an absolutely fantastic painter. She makes photorealistic portraits of people. She graduated in 1998 from the uh, University of West of England in Bristol and her career has been going from strength to strength ever since. Now most people will start their career as an artist and then start entering competitions. Becca did it the other way around. Uh, she entered a BP Portrait Award quite early on after she graduated and her painting got into the exhibition and that gave her the confidence to continue to pursue her ambitions of going on to become a portrait painter. Now Becca is always busy with numerous commissions and has had her work published in a number of books including a book called 500 Painters by the director of the National Portrait Gallery Sandy Nan. She also has work in the Artists and Illustrators magazine on a regular basis and is actually currently one of their featured artists. Anyway, I will let Becca go on to tell you the rest of her interesting story. Enjoy. So your degree was called... Um, art and visual culture. Art and visual culture. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So how did like, you learn to paint like this then? Just picked it up. You just taught yourself? Kind of, yeah. And really just looked at the old masters. Yes. Yeah. You know. I mean, we were looking at some paintings by Sargent yesterday and yeah. I was just blown away. Yeah. Like we went and had a look in the National Gallery and in the, you know, in the National Portrait Gallery and saw these portraits and it's just like, I mean, that's really what was helps you know me get any technique but I haven't really studied anything in a proper technical way wow you know probably should have done I'm, I'm now beginning to start learning things in a different way but yeah so I just I don't know I'd always done portraits and I did portraits of people that I knew and I was doing the graphics work and the illustration work mm. and ducks and packaging and all that kind of things <laughs> like rubber ducks and and then I got sent a letter in my, my old um, house that I used to live in, Bristol, and I just went back for the weekend to go and see some mates, and there was this letter saying, oh, can you do a portrait of old fellow of Cambridge? And I went round there, and I was like, oh my God, I've got to paint him. But at a similar time, I went to the BP Portrait Awards, so I was just blown away. I was just like, my God, you know, this has really moved up a level. And I just really wanted to get involved. And I just started doing this portrait of this old man and I just got completely into it. Just couldn't stop painting. I was wow. just off on one for six months. My mates were like, where's Becca gone? It was like, oh, she's painting again. And, and then I entered it and it got in, it got voted in and third in the People's Choice. And it just all went from there really. And then I got invited to do a portrait at Fitzwilliam College, which was the college where this old man was. Mm. And, um, did that and then they invited me to do the exhibition which was the most taxing thing ever <laughs> with the glass walls and stuff oh, yeah because <laughs> yeah, you think how am I going to put my paintings up in there before you went to uni when did you know that you wanted to be a fine artist because your degree was art and visual culture mm. so when did you know that you wanted to, to do fine art probably not until I did that portrait really because yeah. when I did that portrait um, it was the first painting I'd done in, in years and I didn't even know if I could paint really I just thought I'd give it a go and I just got so into it and um, I was doing all the graphics work at the time and I went over to China and it was really polluted there and you know it was just really like smog thick smog and it was all fact you know they're having their industrial revolution or whatever and I didn't like 
the ethos behind what I was doing because it was sort of like, you know, throwaway products, really. Mm. I did this portrait and he actually died whilst I was doing the portrait oh just God. before. And I went to see him and he was really, really ill. And um, it was just a really sad experience. I went to see him and they couldn't wake him up because he was all morphined up. And um, I don't know. And I, I, I finished the portrait and I really pushed it. I really, really pushed it. I mean, he was sort of so on his deathbed. And it was just before I finished it that I found out he died. And it made me push it even more because I was like, wow, this is like, you know, this is like something to commemorate this person. And it felt so important. And then I had letters from people that he knew, you know, people that he taught. And they were like, thanks so much. This really means a lot to us. And that's when I just, I just, it just makes me well up, really. Because I think, wow, you know, I'm actually doing something that means something to yeah. people. And I thought, this is what I want to do. I, and I didn't know how to get into it. But one thing led to another. I got a commission on the back of the BP Portrait Awards. And... I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was an involved commission, but it wasn't lots of money. And I got made redundant from my job and I just thought to hell with it. Like time, you know, time waits for no man. Let's just get on with it and see if I can make some sort of living. And one thing gradually led on to another and I got another commission and, you know, it was properly hand to mouth, but if you really love doing something, you just find a way, don't you? Yeah. You just make it happen because... Yeah. You know, otherwise, what's the other, you know, thing that's going to happen? You end up doing so something that you don't want to do. So you've been full time since then? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And when was that? 2006. 2006. Yeah, okay. I'm terrible with dates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's just, I've just been kind of winging it ever since. And sometimes it is like that, and I've got no work. I had absolutely nothing in the pipeline whatsoever, and I just thought, oh my God, you know, is this it? Is this the one... Is this the time where I'm actually really just going to go and have to get a, a job again? But then, you know, things just crop up and you see an opportunity or you start, even when times get tough, you just start pushing yourself in a different direction. Mm. You know, I mean, I sort of got into doing all these landscapey things because I got pushed into a direction. I didn't know whether I was going to make any money. And again, I just thought, right, what can I do? If the portraits aren't happening, what can I do that's going to appeal to people in a more kind of, yeah, more kind of mass market kind of way, you know, because portraiture is very, very kind of niche. Yeah. And especially most people don't really want to have a picture of someone on their wall, if it actually, you know, if it's an exact representation. I went to a gallery ages ago, and it was, um, I, I was showing them my work, and I said, you know, I don't know how to get into it. And they said, well, really, you should show what they look like. So it could be anyone, you know, like a really sexy lady walking up the stairs or something in a beautiful dress or, you know, looking, but it doesn't actually look like them. And I thought, well, what's the point if I can actually get a likeness of someone? Why am I trying to kill that? But they said, you know, most people have got like sort of what you know there's only room for one alpha male or one alpha female in the house and they don't want a portrait of some other really good looking woman in the house because they want to think that their partner's with them and yeah. they only have got eyes for them and so you know other than big kind of grand houses where you've got you know generations of the ancestors in the regalia <laughs> or whatever you know it's not that nor normal to have portraits of people so how does it work? You get commissions from people yeah. who want portraits of themselves or loved ones. Well, usually institutions. Institutions. So then I'm actually, I've got into a really new niche bracket, which is portraits of people who don't want to be painted. What? Yeah. Well, because, okay, so someone's working in an institution, yeah, and it's like a college or a school, and they're like a head teacher or something like this, and there's a governing body, and they commission me and they ask me if I will paint this person. And then this person gets told about it and they're like, oh my God, um, I've got someone shadowing me. I'm really, really busy trying to wrap it all up before I retire. And then they're like, yeah, it's a great honor. Will you have your portrait painting? And they're thinking, oh my God, you know, this is horrible. Yeah. And I don't know this person. And they're gonna come in and they're gonna try and extrapolate bits of my character and say if it's bits that I don't like or they make me look ugly or they make me look really old or tired. And so what kind of institutions? 
Well, like colleges, um, universities, things like mm. that, really, in schools. Really? Yeah. You know, and generally, I go into a meeting with someone that's, um, you know, being told they're going to have their portrait, or at least are, they're asked, and they say, yes, I'd love to. That's just <laughs> great. That's just what I needed right now. And I'm like, you know, trying to get everything wrapped up and <laughs> feeling a bit older and like, you know, a bit tired from this post that I've been in for ages. And, and I go in and, you know, and I try and just, calm the situation down and I'm like look you know we're not going to do anything that you're not going to be happy with and I mean maybe that's not the way that some portrait painters work but I want them to be happy like, without kind of being a bit too flattery about it I want it to be truthful but in a in their best light yeah and once they realize that I'm not there to pick holes in them and make them look bad and then we, we get a good rapport going and then you know hopefully this thing that's a nightmare for them turns into something that's really not quite as painful yeah. and how did you get nick i thought someone that's in the public eye and someone who's got i think he's got a lovely face nick you know he's got a lot of um character um he's a very dapper man and i just thought actually he's kind of what i would like to think of like a sort of quintessential english gentleman mm -hmm. And I thought it would be really nice to paint him. And so it kind of went through Margaret and Margaret got us in touch with each other. And then I met up with him at the National Portrait Gallery and we looked at the BP Portrait Awards together and really enjoyed ourselves. I just wanted to do something different with it. Usually um, my work is kind of governed by, you know, the, the governing body and what's expected and, you know, um, they say a background with like say loads of bookends because it's a person that's founded a library. And so, very rarely, I get the chance to actually kind of push things in a direction that I would just do for myself. And this was more for, for me. Painting him and doing something in a, a bit more of a contemporary light, just keeping some of it really flat colour and the whole emphasis. I think it's a really interesting composi composition yeah. here because it's got this diagonal sweep. And he's, very, he's a very elegant man. And I wanted that to come across in it. But I wanted to keep a simplicity and actually really just focus on the important area, which is the hands, and then leading up into the face. Yeah. So the tie is almost like an arrow, really. Yeah. You know, but I was trying to keep the tie flat pink. The background was white and it just wasn't working. And for ages I was sort of thinking, oh, you know, I don't want it to compromise by having a, like a, a black background and I don't know. And then it just came together. I had a sort of revelation. I was like, right, let's get the gray paint out <laughs> and paint over stuff. And it's sort of, uh, I think it's worked out quite well. I think it's amazing. I'm really happy with it. Good. I'm glad you like it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, what would you say was the biggest challenge that you've ever had to face in, in your career so far? And what steps did you take to overcome it? Because you obviously did, because you're still here. <laughs> I am still here. It was a bit dicey. <laughs> I guess, well, I guess the biggest challenge was putting on this exhibition at Cambridge. Okay. And they, um, I'd just done a, um, a, a portrait of the master there. And um, they said, oh, well, we'd like you to put a portrait exhibition on. And I'd never done an exhibition before in my life. So to do a solo show in a college in Cambridge um, is quite a tall order, really, because I just thought, well, how do I break it down? What, what do I start with? They didn't give you a curator to work with? No, I did it all myself. Wow. So I did all my own PR, but I really had to orchestrate the whole thing. And I think that's been my biggest challenge because there were times where I just thought, oh my God, like what on earth am I doing? This is incredibly difficult. Um, and it's really like partitioning your mind off because you know, in one sense, you've got to get the actual paintings done. And I'd be sitting there looking at these paintings in, you know, sort of states of unfinished, looking a bit deformed, maybe, and eyes like not quite in the right place. And, you know, and you're thinking, oh my God, you know. And then you're thinking, but, you know, I've got to get people to go to this. How do I get people to go? Um, you know, so it was like doing all my own press and like trying to get featured in like some papers you know, covered all different angles with it. And how long, what time period did they give you to get everything done? I don't know. I mean, it might have been about six months, eight okay. months or something. Um, you know, and that's like a whole exhibition. Mm. I mean, some of the paintings I did, I managed to get back for the exhibition, but a lot of it was generating like a whole body of new work mm. for it. And I really wanted to come up with a theme that was going to fit everything in. 
But you managed to pull it off. But I managed to pull it off. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. 3D. <laughs> what would you say was your, the thing that you're the most proud of, the achievement to date that you're the most proud of and what steps did you take to get it? Um, well, I mean... I mean, maybe it was my first painting, which was of this old man and just kind of pushing myself because I was working during the week mm. up in London and then I was coming back and working until six in the morning on this portrait. I was really knackered by the end of it, but I, achieve, you know, it's just sometimes if you don't push yourself, you don't realise what you can achieve. Mm. And I felt like I really, really pushed myself with that and proved that I could do something that I didn't know I could before. So maybe that was it. But then in a similar way, I've been sort of pushing the boundaries with this and I'm really, really pleased with the direction that this is going in because I think there could be a whole kind of new slant coming into my work yeah. that I want to explore. Yeah. And it's nice when you kind of, you have something in your head that it's not quite tangible and you really want to reach it and you can't quite reach it and then suddenly something happens and you achieve it and you feel like you've gone on to the next Mm -hmm. rung of the ladder or something yeah, yeah. so I guess you know could be this yeah. could be that <laughs> yeah. um okay so now going slightly off topic well majorly off topic actually um thinking about um being a female artist in in well the whole world is we live in a patriarchal world anyway but the art world um when you look at statistics for representation of women they're pretty dismal um I, I think of the major galleries Something like between 60 and 80 percent, don't quote me though, I read it in a um, was it Art News the other day. Something like between eight, 60 and 80 percent of the major solo shows in the major galleries, like Listen Gallery, are male artists. That's and quite interesting. It, yeah, and between 4 and 20 percent in institutions are female artists in terms of being represented in really? major art institutions in the UK. Yeah, it is really quite serious. But things are starting to change. Like uh, the Tate recently appointed the first ever female director, Maria Bolshaw, I think her name is. Okay. And she's taken steps to specifically, you know, the extension that they've got there the uh, at Tate Modern. Right. Um, so she's appointed 50% of the solo show rooms to female artists. In, a, right. in an attempt to start to redress the balance. I get the sense that things are changing, um, but I just wanted to know from a personal perspective for you, have you felt any kind of difficulty or specific difficulty or discrimination as a result of being female? No. No. No, I'm, so. just, <laughs> I'm just often one in my own little <laughs> world. And I, you know, if people like it, they like it, to be honest. You know, it makes me feel pleased that this is being addressed. Yeah. What would you say success in the art world means to you? <laughs> success in the art world, um, I don't know. To me, it's just success is making my sitters happy and carry on painting. So I, I haven't really got a massive thing about the art world. I'm just sort of getting on with what I do yeah. and, and people are happy with me. Then I feel like that's generating its own success. And hopefully that brings on success in the art world. If you could go back in time, like literally step, in, step into a time machine right now, mm. to 1998, what advice would you give yourself? Um, don't listen to Gary Peters. <laughs> <laughs> when he said go on the dole. Oh, that man. Because <laughs> I did go on the dole, but then saying that, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not really a great believer in putting the clock back and changing things, because I think everything happens for a reason, so I wouldn't change it, because yeah. yes, I did go on the dole, but I went on a brilliant course that got me involved with the Prince's Trust, and then I did my trade fairs, and I got snapped up and it all led on from that so no I wouldn't change it good yeah <laughs> and what advice would you give to somebody who came up to you now and said oh my god I so love your work I want to do what you do what advice would you give them and they're completely green get on with it start painting start drawing and just keep going and, you know don't get put off by anyone that's what I would say yeah just brilliant yeah thank you <laughs> no worries yes, that's it. it's all done <laughs> all done <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Thanks very much for joining me for that edition of Art Discussion with the lovely Becca Smith. As always, please do look in the description bar below for all of the information about Becca. There's links to her website and social media channel, etc. Please do subscribe to the channel because by subscribing, you get to keep up with the latest interviews like this one. And you just never know where I'm going to end up next. Until next time, take care.
拜。